Have no fear, fellow citizens. The mediator is here. Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top eight headlines and developing international news stories that made it this week. Whew. Mediation can be tough, so let's waste no time. Let's get to it. Story number one. The coronavirus may be altering the course of America's future and changing the status quo if it hasn't already. Some reports say that the U.S. may need more than a $2 trillion stimulus package to keep from treading water as the ongoing struggle to defeat the coronavirus continues. Another headline, two big world powers, the U.S. and China, may now have the worst relationship ever now according to a report by Vox if they didn't have a bad relationship already. A Florida pastor held services at his megachurch and was arrested because he violated a state order to comply with social distancing orders by the state. And it goes on. The list goes on. After having rehearsal, two Washington choir members are dead and 45 sick due to the coronavirus. So people are being stubborn and trying to worship instead of following state uh, orders. The list goes on and on. Students are losing out on some valuable education time. Now, this is a report that says 15,000 L.A. high school students have reportedly been absent in some of their online classes. Students, kids are skipping out, and maybe due to parents, you never know. The traveling industry is also taking a big hit as they have had to face numerous amounts of restrictions, which is hindering some people from traveling. Macy's lays off 130,000 workers in this battle with the coronavirus. It is changing things. Amazon workers in New York reportedly threatened a walkout. They're going to walk off the job if the building is not clean, if it hasn't been already. This headline made it in. An Elton John living room concert attracted almost 9 million people. Even the, in the entertainment industry is having to adjust it. People are watching things on TV and tuning in to raise money. Due to the coronavirus, House Democrats call for the release of some prisoners. So that means some people, some sex offenders, prison, pe people have been locked up. Some of them may be getting released. Now, even in sports, the WNBA will be holding a virtual draft this season because of the coronavirus. As you can see, story number one, that's why it made it to the top eight. A lot of things are changing here in America and not business as usual as the stories about the coronavirus effect on this country continue to surface. Story number two, there are still two sides of the coin when it comes to the coronavirus effect. Now, a report by Bloomberg says that hospitals are threatening workers by telling them if they speak out about work conditions, they will be fired. Very, very scary. And this is a representative democracy that practices freedom. And we have a Bill of Rights. But the coronavirus is affecting that bill. It may change uh, some ways the Constitution is written. Who knows? It may say something like if there's a disease or a spread, then the Constitution is void. And this is the struggle you're seeing in some of these stories. Amazon worker fired in Staten Island for wanting coronavirus protection on the job. Cardi B has even made some headlines. Apparently, she is not happy with the way the government has responded to the coronavirus. She has also called out some celebrities for getting special treatment. Whew, the list goes on and on. That's why story number two made it to the top eight. Story number three. How serious is the coronavirus? Some studies show that this virus could also be airborne. 
This is a developing story. I do not know how true this is, but it did make headlines. Some reports are even circulating that the coronavirus could be slowing down in New York, according to public data. Now, this is only speculation. It is not fact yet. Up to 10% of people who recover from the coronavirus reportedly tested positive again after they recovered. So this is showing you how serious this virus could or can't be. So who knows? We will continue as these stories continue to develop and as new information continues to come in about this virus. As the world fights the coronavirus, some reports say that China is going back to work, apparently closing itself off. So after they reported the virus and they start to defeat it they're going back to work as usual while everybody else is fighting so this could be a game changer in the globe on the global chessboard now professionals what they know about the virus rep reportedly keeps changing according to a report by usa today so even what professionals think they have figured out seems to keep changing so this is an evolving story a developing big story that keeps changing how serious is this virus now according to a fox news report the cdc director says that china first thought that the coronavirus was not transmitted from human to human so this could be why a lot of Citizens are using their own judgment and getting so much polarizing information. It's changing. It's, it's, it's altering how people are responding. And this could be why most people are not taking this virus that serious. Now, it turns out that comparing coronavirus data in other countries can be misleading compared to the United States. This is really, really confusing a lot of people. Testing with anti-malaria drug is showing to be effective in treating the coronavirus, according to a Kansas doctor. So as you can see, this virus in story number three is still developing, but it kind of gets you to realize why things are so confusing and not why people may not be taking this virus that seriously. What well, leads us into story number four. Story number four. Many still do not think that the coronavirus is as bad as it seems. And if you checked out story number three, you can understand why. UK police had to break up a party with dozens of people. The report claims that they even had a karaoke machine. Even in the midst of all this coronavirus talk, people are still not taking this virus seriously because they don't believe it's that bad. Doctors say that even in this outbreak, people are still stealing from hospitals. They're stealing hospital supplies. So you can see that some people either just do not take this virus seriously. They think it's a joke and they're taking some of their pain out on the medical industry. Detroit Pistons Christian Wood has fully recovered from the coronavirus, according to his agent. So some people are recovering, but you can see why these stories have made it into this, uh, this top eight. You can see why they're ongoing and developing because everybody is still trying to get a grasp on this disease. Now we're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the top four stories that made it to the media this week. Don't go anywhere. You're in the media with me, Brian West. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Whew. Mediation can be tough, but we're almost there. Let's get to the top four headlines and developing news stories, international news stories that made it this week. Let's waste no time. Let's get to it. Story number five. The coronavirus is hitting the economy really, really hard. Now, some economic activists are very, very concerned, that includes economists, about the U.S. debt in the midst of the government passing a stimulus package. Now, the reason why I say activists is because some of these people are not economists, but they're actually activists, and this also has economists concerned as well. It's about the debt. Now, there are reports that some may be eyeing a rent strike as well due to the coronavirus. So these are all people who are concerned about the flow of the economy. And some people who are in the middle of the fight, some people may be planning some rent strikes because they can't pay their rent. Now, jobless claims have skyrocketed due to the state ordering shutdowns and also regulations that they've put in place. Now, they, they've put these 
things in place to contain the virus, but many are concerned about the effect and how it's hitting the economy. Now, keep in mind that a lack of jobs also equals a lack of people who are insured. That's health insurance. People can't, if you don't have a job, you can't be insured or you cannot be, can't afford insurance. So you can see how this is hitting the economy and it's having a ripple effect. Now, the National Restaurant Association says that 11% of restaurants could close for good due to this, the fighting of this virus and regulations put in place. Now, some economists think once this is all over, things will be boosted back up. But right now, a lot of people are biting their, na their nails because they don't know how this is going to affect. Now, there's not enough policies because this has never really happened before uh, in this type of economy. So there's not enough policies to protect the economy in the midst of being shut down, inactive. Now, some parts of the economy may be seeing gains, but some parts are seeing losses. So this is why most people shouldn't panic. Some there are some places to invest. Now, last week, Lowe's was set to hire 30,000 positions while also giving employees an $80 million bonus because of the coronavirus. So you can see why story number five is in the top four. It really, really shows you how this economic seesaw and this teeter-totter that we're on is, is, going, is happening right in front of us. Story number six. Even in lockdown mode, there is still crime. People are still committing crimes. Some reports have shown a slight spike in domestic violence cases as well. Home abuse, that's, that's, that's gone up. Two police officers were wounded in a Phoenix shooting and a commander was killed, according to a report by USA Today. Now, apparently, the coronavirus has also caused a rise in drug and alcohol abuse cases, according to circulating reports. Now, these are ongoing reports that are, that are making news. The FBI has arrested actor Keith Middlebrook for touting a fake coronavirus cure. Cure. I've seen stories like this in, in multiple headlines. Mexico is now cracking down on Americans crossing the border to get into Me Mexico. Now, before it was Mexicans trying to get to America. Whew. Mediation can be tough. Now, Google reportedly seeing an uptick in phishing websites in the midst of emerging virus of this emerging virus pandemic. That means people are trying to even get information in the midst of all this chaos. Criminals just do not sleep. FBI reports that a Missouri man was planning to bomb a coronavirus hospital. Arrests in Spain, almost 900 people violating their stay-at-home orders. You can see these stories are heating up. That's why story number six almost made it to the top two. Even in lockdown mode, people are still committing crime. Story number seven and the top two international stories that made it in this week. Stories that you may want to keep an eye on. Big time stories. Many healthcare workers are not satisfied with the way things are being handled. Now, this is a big report. They said for nearly two decades, the call for more ventilators by federal agencies were apparently ignored. Some of this hassle and panic could have been prevented. Another report by ProPublica shows that some internal emails reveal a chaotic and unstable CDC, which could reveal why there was such a slow response to the coronavirus. So in story number seven, there are some emerging facts that says some of this panic could have been prevented. This is all. This is why story number seven is so important because new reports are emerging and healthcare workers are really, really not happy. Story number eight in the top story headline that made it to the media this week: developing stories, international stories. Multiple reports have surfaced about how some Americans are in denial about Trump's flaws in office. Here's some headlines. It's very evident that Americans are divided and polarized when it comes to political views. But there are many circulating reports about how Trump supporters don't see things from the status quo. That means they don't see things for what they really are. Some of them say they do. Some of them say they don't. There, there's you know, Some reports are saying that this is due to what they see when it comes to this administration. There was a big, big article uh, pointing this out about how some people are just falling 
for Trump's con game. They say he says one thing on the news, and then he says another thing behind the camera, but there's two sides of this coin. Now, many reports focus on how many times this president has given a sense of false hopes and how many times he has lied at the podium in front of the media. Now, Trump supporters say that the media is not giving him a fair shake, but many onlookers say that the Trump curtain can't be moved and he has conned his supporters to the point that they are in denial. Now, this is a, a big developing story. The report is still, this is still developing due to the rage that is hidden inside of many Americans when it comes to this administration and how this country is being run. Some people have just given up. In the midst of all this, Trump's approval rating has hit a new high. This is even in the midst of madness and polarization. Think about that. Now, a poll was also taken last week that showed that Americans do not approve of the news media's response to the coronavirus. So there are many sides of the coin here. Some people don't like the way Trump is handling. Some people don't like the way the media is. Now, you can see why there's so much confusion in the United States of America, which is far from united right now. Now, it goes on. An article by Political labels Trump as an authoritarian weak man revealing this is revealing the the separation the division amongst intellectuals academics and average voters when it comes to this president this could be why you see so much confusion in this fight if we could all just get on the same page now a week ago the world health organization praised trump's leadership in the response to this virus now do you see why there is so much confusion and why story number eight made it to the top this week? Well, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. As usual, I'd like to thank all the news outlets, the journalists, and the people on the front lines that keep us informed. You deserve all the credit. I'm just a mediator. As usual, if you want to show us some support, go to our website, buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor the program. I am out of here. It's been a long week. Stay safe. Listen to the professionals. And please, please try not to get confused. There are facts out there. You just have to search for them and you have to stay informed. I'm out of here. Have a good week, everybody. Thank you for tuning to the meeting with me, Brian West. Peace. Have no fear, fellow citizens. The meeting is here. Please stand if you want to check out the stories that almost made it in or did make it in, go to our Twitter feed on our website. Check out everything. All of the sources are there. And go to the website. It's M-E-T-H-O-D, the number at I-N-C.com, method8inc.com, where you can buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor a program.